You're on. Hi everyone, I am here with your Bible reading. I hope you guys are having a good day. Here at Sherp's Game. Okay, so let's start off with a guardian angel story. Or an angel story. This one is by Emily F. Fishburn. says, while grieving the loss of her furry best friend, Woman's World reader Emily F. Fishburne received a sign that his spirit was still with her. She writes, My best friend of 13 years passed away in our living room, wrapped up in my dad's jacket and snuggled in his bed, finally escaping the pain of withering bones and aching joints. I heard his final sigh and choked back my grief. Nothing instead of a beauty of a peaceful last day. I was only five years old when Shiloh came into my life. As all littermates do, we played and grew together. Shiloh was not an ordinary dog though. He seldom barked and never whined. The only sign he was near was the clicking and sometimes it seemed tap dancing of his paws and nails across the hardwood floor. We raced up hills, played with my cat, and rolled on the grass every day. We enjoyed what fleeting time we had together by living each day fully and never considering its end. The morning I left for university, I hugged my dear companion and rested my face on his. This was something we always did. After kissing his face, I would rest my forehead and nose along his snout. Nose to nose, we would look into each other's eyes. After his passing, I returned to college, but focusing on schoolwork suddenly became tedious and disheartening. When I next visited home, I came to find Shiloh's cremated remains in a beautiful solid wood box with a plaque bearing his name. Now all alone in the living room, I sat down on the floor and cradled his box. I closed my eyes to hold in my tears as I hugged what I had left of him. It was then that I felt a softness and warmth along my forehead and down my nose. I no longer opened my eyes to search for him when I suddenly heard the sound of clicking nails across the hardwood. The sound startled me. I stood up to look around the house. I found nothing suspicious and determined no earthly cause for the sound. But I was now certain my Shiloh was there with me. I found my own silent strength that day and the courage to move forward. That afternoon, I suddenly realized that his loyal, sweet, and kindred spirit had never really left my side and that it never would. Amen. I 100% believe that. share similar stories that people's told me about things like that happening with loved ones. Okay guys, so let me read um, the prayer requests. Please keep the following people in prayer. Judy Thompson, Sherman Crabtree, Rhonda Karshner and Abby Myers, Jimmy Myers, Cindy and Jim Welsh, Dora Carver, Layla, Melody Stanley, Michelle Watkins, Latham Burns, Bonnie Dose Jr., Danette Rager, Ray Dunlap, and Bart Post. Okay guys, today we're going to be reading Hebrews chapter 9, verses 1 through 10, Psalm 106, we're still continuing on with it, with verses 32 through 48, and Proverbs chapter 27, verse 10. Okay, in Hebrews today, we're going to be talking about worship in the earthly tabernacle. Oops, sorry. My page just minimized on me here. 
Now the first covenant had regulations for worship and also an earthly sanctuary. A tabernacle was set up. In its first room were the lampstand and the table with its consecrated bread. This was called the holy place. Behind the second curtain was a room called the most holy place which had the golden altar of incense and the gold carved Ark of the Covenant. The Ark contained a good jar of man, a gold jar of manna, Aaron's staff that had budded, and the stone tablets of the covenant. Above the Ark were the cherubim of the glory, overshadowing the atonement cover. But we cannot discuss these things in detail now. When everything had been arranged like this, the priests entered regularly into the outer room to carry on their ministry, but only the high priests entered the inner room, and that, the, and that only once a year, and never without blood, which he offered for himself and for the sins of the people, and committed in ignorance. The only spirit was showing by this that the way into the most holy place had not yet been disclosed as long as the first tabernacle was still functioning. This is an illustration for the present time, indicating that the gifts and sacrifices being offered were not able to clear the conscience of the worshiper. They are only a matter of food and drink and various ceremonial washings, external regulations applying until the time of the new order. And that's where we're gonna start with Hebrews today. Basically, that, that was the old covenant, that was the way they did stuff back then. And after Jesus came along, Jesus being the new covenant, after Jesus came along, God didn't want sacrifices and things like that anymore because nothing, could, no sacrifice could compare to Jesus' sacrifice for giving his life for our sins. Jesus gave the final sacrifice. Okay, and we're continuing on with the psalm today. Psalm 106, verses 32 through 34, talking about when God freed the Hebrews from the land of Egypt and was taking them to the promised land. And remember, they kept turning their back on him. Then they would forgive him and worship him again. And then they'd turn their back on him again. It happened like that all the time. By the waters of Meribah they angered the Lord, and trouble came to Moses because of them. For they rebelled against the Spirit of God, and rash words came from Moses' lips. They did not destroy the peoples, as the Lord had commanded them, but they mingled with the nations and adopted their customs. They worshipped their idols, which became a snare to them. They sacrificed their sons and their daughters to false gods. They shed innocent blood, the blood of their sons and daughters, whom they sacrificed to the idols of Canaan. And the land was de desecrated by their blood. They defiled themselves by what they did, but their deeds, they prostituted themselves. Therefore the Lord was angry with his people and abhorred his inheritance. He gave them into the hands of the nations and their foes ruled over them. Their enemies oppressed them and subjected them to their power. Many times he delivered them, but they were bent on rebellion, and they wasted away in their sin. Yet he took note of their distress when he heard their cry. For their sake he remembered his covenant, and out of his great love he relented. He caused all who held them captive to show them mercy. Save us, Lord our God, and gather us from the nations, that we may give thanks to your holy name and glory in your praise. Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Let all the people say amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right, guys, and now ending today's Bible reading is Proverbs chapter 27, verse 10. Do not forsake your friend or a friend of your family, and do not go to your relative's house when that disaster strikes you. Better a neighbor nearby than a relative far away.
All right, guys, that was our Bible reading for today. I hope it touched your guys' hearts. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Let's bring those souls to Jesus, and God willing, we'll see you guys again tomorrow with another Bible reading. Bye, guys. God bless.